judge nominees. You ready? All right. So one of the main things I wanted to do today is get some family court nominees that are conservatives, the Republican nominee for the family courts right here in Harris County. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves for one minute each, and then I'm going to get a question across, and I want you guys to be thinking about your questions for the family courts. You know, we've got civil, we've got criminal, and we've got the family courts right here uh, in Harris County. And so why is it important to have family uh, family court judges that are conservatives, fiscally conservatives? Uh, you know, why is that important? And so if you... If you haven't thought about that question, start thinking about it now as each of these nominees introduce themselves. I think we'll start out with Todd Frankfurt. If you don't mind, just give a one minute introduction to the group. All right. Tell My us what you do for business and why you're qualified. All right. My name is Todd Frankfurt. I'm running for the 308th Family District Court. And what I do for business, I've been in private practice since I got out of law school, so almost 28 years in private practice. I've been board certified in family law since 2007. And so what that means is I had to study for and take a ridiculously difficult exam um, so that I can say that I am a specialist in the area of family law. Um, I have, I guess in, in my 28 years in practice, I have focused really on property cases cases that are involving complex marital estates that require a little something extra to think about how we're going to split up. That's kind of macro, or I guess micro. Macro, what's important to think about for y'all is statistically, half the people in this room will end up in family court, or will know somebody who ends up in family court or we'll have a neighbor, or a son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, who ends up in family court. And what's important is you want the person ruling on, their, on that case to have experience, and to understand the law, and to apply the law based on the evidence before them, not on some preconceived notion, not on some legislating from the bench type situation, but based on the law and the facts. And that's what I know that I would do from the bench, and I'm, I'm sure that, that Rachel and Gardner would do the same, but I'll let them talk for themselves. Thank you, Todd. My name is Rachel Liao Hudson, and I'm running for the 313th Court. The 313 is a dual jurisdiction court because it only hears two things, CPS, and juvenile cases. It is the most vulnerable of our family law courts and the most vulnerable of our criminal law courts. And there's only three of these type of courts in Harris County. So I've been practicing for 15 years this November. I've been a solo practitioner having my own law firm for the last nine years of that. I have a master's degree in social work knowing that I specifically wanted to impact child welfare. Soon after I got out of law school and passed the bar, I worked at the Harris County Attorney's Office and I represented CPS on behalf of Harris County. In my solo practice, I only do child welfare, amicus work in the family law courts, CPS, usually representing children, a lot of times representing parents as well. I do family law mediation, and in East Texas, I do juvenile cases. I've also been in-house counsel for the Alabama Cushada Indian Tribes ICWA section doing their federal Indian welfare law because they have their own, they're their own nation, and they practice their own law. And all of those things are great, and I love all of those things, but really what gives me a unique perspective about these courts is I'm the oldest of 19 children and we were all adopted and many through the state. I've represented the department, I've represented the parents, I've represented the children, I've been the child. 
Got it. That's awesome. Got it. You know, let me brag on Rachel real quick. Whenever she was in the primary race, did any does anybody remember kind of the the little mess that was started with an opponent uh, that wanted to was running against her? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll let her talk about that in just a second. But I just want you to know she's a fighter. She's a scrapper. She's smart as can be, and she didn't let anybody with some corrupt motives intimidate her one bit. She fought it out. She got on the ballot. We got behind her too when we met her. We were real friends. I'm going to move on to the next candidate, my friend Gardner Eastland of 20, almost 20 years. Gardner Eastland, tell us a little bit about yourself and why we should be voting for you. Hi, my name is Gardner Eastland. I was born and raised in Houston, and I guess I'm going on year 19 of practicing, some people say we're crazy for doing this, but exclusively family law. Uh, so I've done hundreds of divorces and uh, kind of the opposite of Todd, he likes complex property. I went to law school because I don't do math. <laughs> I, I do a lot of the drama, the, the nasty child custody, the lifetime movie type of stuff that you see. Uh, I've gotten custody for dads and moms, I've protected a lot of children. And then Joe and some friends came to me and said, you ought to think about Really, you always talk about these children. You do pro bono cases when people give you a soft story. You know, you could really protect a lot of children if you ran for the bench. No, no, no. I got to save for my kids' college. I don't know if I want to do that. And then I find out that my primary opponent has never filed a single divorce or tried a single case of any kind. So in six days, I got the signatures thanks to you fine folks and some other folks uh, and got on the ballot. If you were here at the Christmas party, you, you uh, when you signed in, you were actually signing. <laughs> no, I was kidding. <laughs> Joe, he was here at the Christmas party collecting signatures. Joe was very good. We refinanced your home and put it in my name. <laughs> at the same time. But it's important for you guys, please, as Todd said, you have a 48 percent chance of getting divorced. And then Todd and I and the eight other candidates will handle 10 percent of the divorces in Harris County. So really the way I look at it is you have a 4.8 percent chance of being in front of Todd and I or I or one of the others. And a lot of people, they go in and just vote for the governor and then leave, but it's very important that you tell your friends to vote all the way down the ballot because what are your chances of getting in front of Abbott? I mean, you could call Joe and maybe get on his calendar, but you have a much higher chance of getting in front of us. And the reason I get out of bed every day is because of my two twin boys. And so families are the most important things we have in this world, and family law is the family in crisis. And you need someone with conservative values and you need someone who's smart and didn't run to get a pay raise to make these tough decisions. Right. Todd and I and Rachel are taking pay cuts because we want to serve. We have a Democrat judge that was working in a damn beauty parlor when she found out she won the election. <laughs> That's how good of a lawyer she was. That's all I'll say about that. But anyway, please encourage everyone to vote down the ballot and get us in there and we will protect the children of Harris County. Awesome. 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 So if I can direct your attention to the screen behind you, you're going to see the, the photos that I chose. I've never done this before. The photos I chose for these candidates for, for this slide is them with their family. I don't know about you, but I feel like if we're going to have a magistrate dealing with family matters, I want to see that they have a family that they love and adore, and that's a big, big part of their life. They want to keep that family together. They want to do the right thing for those children. And, and I, I think that these three family courts, they're all, of course, they told you which courts they're running for, but these three family court nominees are clearly family people that love their families. I've been around them, and like Gardner, I've known them for 20 years. You know, I mean, we were only six years old right now. So anyway. Yeah, so I mean, I've known him for quite a while. You were 70 back then. Yeah, something like that. 
but that kind of gives you an idea of what's important to them. I'm going to kick off the first question. I, I know that you guys may think of one as well. We're going to spend a few minutes with them before we go to the next segment. The first question that I'm going to put across to each of you, and you guys answer in whatever order you, you work out amongst yourselves uh, till we're done answering this question, but why is it important to have a conservative values Republican family court judge? I, I think all of us understand only because we've had pure Democrat liberal judges in the criminal courts, in the civil courts in Harris County right now, and we're seeing the ridiculous crime wave. I'm on five years backlog for a civil case that should have been a, a, a summary judgment right now. They just keep pushing it off. In fact, the judge said, you know, what do I care about uh, uh, two white guys suing each other, you know, or something like that. So why <coughs> is it important in any order that you guys choose that we have conservative Republican family court judges? I I'll just jump in real quick. I, I think character and integrity are very important, uh, as well as um, just respecting our values. Uh, for instance, my opponent in the Democrat Party, um, our good friend Wayne Del Chiquino, did a video about her. She has uh, received a bunch of money, not until after she was elected, and then she has made some very disturbing rulings based on which lawyers gave her that money. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the case he highlights, there was a father that was shooting off a gun in the house, and the police had been called several times, and he still has the same divorce dad visitation that I have. And that, to me, is insane. So I thought about that when I was running, and me personally, I'm not taking any money from divorce lawyers. Not a single penny. So that should January 3rd come around and I am your judge, none of my friends or non-friends or fellow attorneys put any pressure on me because they wrote me a check. I'm not going to play that game. So I think integrity, but mainly like Todd said, it's kind of sad. It's the knowledge of the law. Uh, I'm having to teach some of these judges and so not to appear disrespectful. I say things on the record like, as the court is well aware, the legislature has limited us in that capacity and the law was changed. And then the judge nods and acts like he or she knows what the hell I'm talking about, but it's clear that it, wherever they went to law school, they didn't learn that. So it's, it's knowledge and integrity. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. I guess for me, it's it's about work ethic. Um, I remember when I was a younger lawyer and before COVID, you'd go to the courthouse and the then Republican judges, they were work, they showed up and they worked. They were there all day long. If you had to, if your hearing was when Hurricane um, Katrina was rolling into town and everyone was following Ike and everyone's freaking out, I was in the middle of a hearing. I was one of the last 20 people to leave the Harris County Courthouse because the then Republican judge was like, Hurricane Schmurricane, we're in the middle of a hearing, keep going, call your next witness. And we're like looking outside going, judge, there's our hurricane rolling in. <laughs> Mr. Frankfurt, call your next, please. Okay, and we we were the, finally the bailiff came and said, "Y'all need to y'all need to get out of here." Um, and my my former spouse was you know I've got home and she's like, "What the heck? Where have you been?" I've been in court because those judges worked. These judges, you would not have that same situation now that you did back then. If elected, I know that I would, I mean, I, that's what I do. I show up and I work every day and I'm, I'm positive that, that these folks would too, but I, to me it's, it's more about work ethic 
and experience, I guess. He, he puts his money where his mouth is. You know, he called me and said, why hasn't this pack endorsed me? They, they just packed Gardner Eastland, for God's sake. <laughs> and so we, we ran the traps around the organization, and everybody had a good feeling about God. And so yeah, I vouched for him. Yeah, you vouched for him. And that's why we had to talk to everybody. Aren't you, Lord? <laughs> and so, I mean, he's willing to do the work, and you can see that. And he thought that BizPAC was important enough that he left his poor wife at home to handle the move of a house all by herself because BizPAC was so important to him. Right now, <laughs> right now, I am getting in trouble. Me, meaning, as soon as this segment's <laughs> over, he's running back home. And we're grateful for him being here. So much you won't get to sleep in your new house that you got. <laughs> I get to sleep on the couch in my new house. Well, look, if, if you need a divorce attorney, no, <laughs> Rachel, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? I do. Um, so what I would like to focus on is priorities. Um, our children in foster care are being sex trafficked. Our children in juvenile centers are being sex trafficked. Um, but if I go to trainings, they want to talk about what the best pronouns are for children. Uh, yeah. What? Right. Yeah. They're being raped. They're being yeah. trafficked. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're prioritizing something that really shouldn't be a priority, something that they're sort of being forced to contend with. We have a huge, what's called a seawalk docket. These are children without placement. So we have children in care and they live in hotels right now because we don't have placements. We don't have foster placements for our children. But we're going to train on saying them they. And we have shut out faith-based programs. We have shut out community programs. We have shut out a lot of things that would really help with trafficking. The reasons that children can be uh, victims of trafficking is because they're vulnerable, they're alone, they're homeless, they don't have friends and family. But if we were allowing our community into the lives of these children in a safe and healthy manner, if we had ad litems who could visit, the attorney ad litems to visit, the child advocates to visit like they're supposed to, and like many of them want to do, would make them less vulnerable to this. Yeah. If we could change the conversations, not about their pronouns, but about their actual safety, about their goals, about what we can do um, to help them reach those goals. If we could get more licensed foster parent and programs to help that and quit shutting out our faith-based community and quit shutting out our uh, business leaders and quit shutting out mentors and other programs that were set up in place to help, then maybe we could make the differences that we're supposed to make and we can quit calling them them they and focus and prioritize what's really important in our juvenile and our CPS systems. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the part of the this is the part of the program with the three judge nominees where we interview. Right? So, Warren, do you have a, a question? Well, I just wanted to make a comment that me and Buck and Utah are running a fundraiser on the 23rd about the John Davies and Chris's house. And quite honestly, the reason we need Republican judges is that all the Democrats, not all of them, most of the Democrats I've ever met, lack the ability to Right. So, not only do you have to have a commandment, Okay, thank you. We'll get that out. We'll get that out to everybody that's on the BizPAC uh, email list. Um, there's also a, uh, uh, we're, we've been asked to kind of put together, I'm going to need some volunteers from around BizPAC. Um, we'd like to, there's a big re, uh, fundraiser for judges in Harris County of all three different types of judges, family court, civil, and criminal, um, that we're putting together. And I'm talking to Ken Paxton's office about he and, um, and also Don Buckingham coming in uh, to, to kind of be the, the main speakers at that event. And 
the, the, potentially we may merge some other events we were planning together and just have a big super event. That might be at River Oaks Country Club. I don't have confirmation on that yet, but we will be getting back to So keep looking for that. If you hear about anything else going on, bring it to us so that we can try to, to reel it in and just get a much bigger event, a much better event for all conservative judges. Okay. Any other questions you have for these? This is your time to interview, and this is your time to ask your question. All right, very good. This segment is going to wrap up, and we're going to let Todd go uh, get back in good graces with his wife. <laughs> good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, so we've got a treat for you today. Uh, we're going to move on to the next segment. Are we ready, Lynn?